This is Andy Schaefers with Acuity. Our demonstration today is on tool center point control for FANUC controls. We'll be looking at the G43.4 command and some of the settings required on your physical machine tool to make TCP or tool center point control operate correctly. During the demonstration, we'll be using NX9, our simulation module, and the machine you see on the screen here is a standard machine out of our library. It's SIM08, and it's a standard type uh, a trunnion style rotary machine. Before we begin looking at the machine tool and the simulation itself, we're going to do a little background information. I'm going to bring up a PDF file from the FANUC manual with a, a quick description of tool center point control as FANUC understands it. What you see here on the page is a description of the two styles of tool center point control and the NX post processors and the NX simulation, both, uh, we support both styles of TCP. The uh, kinematic understanding of those two styles is shown here where we have either a coordinate system that is fixed in space as you make movements or rotations on the table. And the other style is where the coordinate system rotates with the table. Let's look at that style first. I'm going to go uh, up to another page here, and we'll see that there are a couple of settings in your control that determine the behavior of these two, uh, of, of your tool center point control. So first of all, if variable number 19696 is set to zero, the workpiece coordinate system is fixed on the table. So that's the, the first style that we're going to look at. And when you have this set to zero, there's another variable here that also comes into play. It's 19754. And what this determines then is, yes, we know the coordinate system is going to be fixed to the table, but when is that going to occur? With the 19754 set to zero, it will fix the coordinate system at the position where the rotation is zero. And that's probably better understood just by doing a quick demo. And in fact, in NX, in our posts and in our simulation, we assume that this value is zero. This is the, the most common way to implement uh, tool center point control, but you'll want to check that on your physical machine tool. Let's check this out now. I've got a program already keyed up and ready to go. What I'm doing is simulating existing G-code. So we'll step through this. Uh, first the machine does its tool change and we put T1 in the spindle. We're moving to X0, Y0. We're looking here for the G-code. Now note that I'm changing to a C minus 90 before I do anything else. Now I invoke tool center point control with the G43.4. And here's where we're going to see the effects of that variable setting. We're going to a G45. So the question is, how far is our part going to rotate? If the coordinate system was fixed here, when we started G43.4, then we would expect the table to only rotate 45 degrees. But if the coordinate system was fixed before at the original zero position, we expect the table to rotate 135 degrees. In other words, make up for the C minus 90 and then rotate C45. Let's see what happens. There's our 90, and then there's our additional 45. So in fact, the uh, tool center point control has fixed the coordinate system according to that variable setting, and it was fixed prior to the C minus 90 in its original C0, A0 position. Okay, let's continue then. I'm going to now simulate another file, and we'll look at a more complex situation with tool center point control. Here's our, uh, 
our control panel again. I'll also hit this button so that we can see the machine axis positions. And here's our tool change. We've now invoked tool center point control with the G43.4. We've returned to the X0, Y0 position, and now we're approaching the first point in our program where we have contacted at the X0, Y0, Z0 position. So I should have pointed out that initially this is G54. Okay, now our next line comes up. And this is uh, X4, C minus 45, which is the opposite corner here. Let's watch what happens. So although that was a very complex move, because of tool center point control, we only had to code the X4. So remember, it's as if the coordinate system is fixed to that block. So we're continuing to program as if we were working on this flat face. So I'm going to head to this corner now, and as you might imagine, that's just a Y move, again with another C rotation. Let's go back to X0 again. And here I'm changing the A a little bit as well. And now we're returning to Y0. Okay, I'm going to close that. And let's look at one of the other benefits of tool center point control. It's that when you've got a program, you can put the block anywhere on the table. And as long as you pick up G54, the program runs correctly. It takes care of situations like here, where when we rotate forward, the, uh, the part actually drops. But here on the other side of the table, if we rotate forward, the block actually raises up. So that transform then is all taken care of internally by tool center point control. Let's move that block now. Oh, I'm sorry, I want to uh, move component. So I've now placed the block in another uh, position, but of course I must also move my G54. Let's run that same program again. up a little bit so you can see the tool change. Going a little faster this time, but you can see, in fact, it continues to follow the exact contours of my part. So here we've seen the two benefits of tool center point control. First, the ease of programming, and second, then, the ability to move the part anywhere on a table and run the same program as long as the G54 is correctly located on the part. Now I'd like to look at a common mistake that uh, is made with tool center point control and the configuration of the post processor. What I have up on the screen now is the program that we just ran. I'm going to make a modification to indicate a problem that people often have with tool center point control. They often believe that you cannot code a rotation in front of the G43.4. And this is a nice feature. It's nice sometimes to be able to rotate that table and then bring in G43.4 and, and drop your Z into position. Here's the 
reason that they get into trouble with this, and I'll just demonstrate this for you. I'm going to remove the X0, Y0 that occurs right after the G43.4. And just for a little background, here's another X0, Y0 that comes out with the G54, so it kind of seems redundant, right? Well, let's take it out and see what happens. I'm going to go back and run that again. Okay, I'll just single block at this point. So we rotate, rotate into position just like we did before. We've just invoked the G43.4, but now we're going right to Z0. Something seems to be very wrong. We're not on our part at all. Okay, there we've contacted the part and the program is continuing to work correctly from that point. What happened here? Let's go back to our program and look. We went to X0, Y0, we rotated, and then we invoked tool center point control. But by not recoding X0, Y0, we made a mistake because we're now in a transformed coordinate system. So we're not actually at X0, Y0. Yes, we did drop to Z0 correctly, but our X and Y were someplace else. So when you pre-rotate and then invoke tool center point control, it's very important to recode your X and Y positions because you're now in transform space. If you're having trouble with this on your shop floor, give this a try and see if you can't put those pre-rotations in as you'd prefer to do. Now we want to look at the other style of tool center point control, where we have a non-rotating workpiece coordinate system. The file you see here on the screen is the initialization file for SIM08, the standard machine out of the NX machine library. This file sets up standards just as your control would. So it emulates the settings you have on the machine on your shop floor. So for me to make this work, I've got to change from the previous demo where we were using zero. Now I've got to type in 32. Save this file. So our machine tool will now respond in the non-rotating workpiece mode. Because the workpiece is now non-rotating, the programming gets a little more difficult. So I'm not going to hand code this program. I'm using generic motion control, and I've created a, a real quick program. I'll just show you a couple of the, the moves here. We're just moving from one corner to the other and following this curve. Now you see some blue lines on the screen here. Those aren't actually involved in the program. They're just there to help us visualize what's going on. So I will begin here by simulating this program just as we did before. The difference this time is that rather than use a text file, I'm simulating the program straight out of the Operation Navigator in NX. So what's happening in the background? NX is taking this operation, sending it through the post processor, and then you'll see the G code appears here as it's being sent to the simulation engine and the motions interpreted. We'll begin playing and you see the first G code appear out of the post. Here comes our tool change. And now I'm going to single block it from here. So you see our pre-rotation and another benefit of tool center point control is you don't actually have to have a motion, a Z motion when you invoke it. So here's G43.4 without a motion. And now we orient all three axes and we're starting just above our part here. Now we've engaged and you see the uh, X, Y, and Z information is quite a bit more complex now and must be calculated by the post because we're using the TCP mode where the coordinate system is fixed in space, not rotating with the part. So 
So here comes our first linear motion. And you can see we're just moving our way around the part and the tool axes in the corner is, is lining up. That just sort of is a, a graphical representation for you. Okay, so we've made it around the part. Uh, next, we're going to go back to rapid mode and we've just picked up and we're at this uh, the corner right here. One of the other benefits of tool center point control is allowing the programmers to move the tool around the part freely without uh, having problems with collisions because we know where the tool is going to move. It's going to move in a linear fashion. So that's really the reason for this blue line that you see here. Again, that's not a motion. It's just there graphically to indicate to you what's going to happen with this tool. So the next command is just telling the tool to move to this point and be oriented to that axis. That's all that's going to happen. It's going to be a single move. But uh, watch what tool center point does as we go through this. And I'll just slow the machine way down. You can see that even though it's only one piece of code, it's moving all three axes and rotating to get over to this new position. So that's a huge benefit in that tool center point control takes out any potential dog leg motion or problems where, say, a part is rotating up and gets into your tool. And you know, how have we solved those problems in the past? Well, generally, the programmer will retract the tool a large distance away from the part to ensure that when those rotations take place, there's no way that there's going to be a collision. And that's effective, but of course, that's all wasted motion. But as you saw here, uh, tool center point control, uh, even with a, a fairly simple command that may, where you may see only a couple of axes um, moving, uh, the, the, the actual motion on the machine tool is much more complex. So here's what you have to be careful of. If you take an old program and just put tool center point control in it, if you had that tool retracted a long ways from the part, you may find that with TCP invoked, as you wrap it around the part, you actually run out of travel. And the reason is you're a long ways from the part, but as you saw here, TCP is always trying to keep that tool in the same position relative to the part. So you can get these large motions out here in space as TCP tries to do that. So while it's a benefit that you can keep the tool close to the part, for some machines where you're lacking in travel, you almost really do have to do that. Otherwise, you can have travel limitations. I hope that the demonstration today was helpful to you. If you have other questions about uh, tool center point control, need some help with your post processor, uh, we are happy to help you with that here at Acuity. And as you're doing your testing on your machine, I encourage you to use very simple parts like the block that you see here. You don't need a, a complex casting to debug your tool center point control, just a simple part with a simple program and check those two variable values that we talked about. You'll be miles ahead. Uh, again, we're happy to help any way we can. Thank you for viewing today.